Welcome to the Cardiac Emma Learner Series, a unique video tutorial program under the aegis of Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. This program is focused on beginners and intermediate images with learning happening through short sessions and case-based discussions. We are grateful to experts from different parts of India who have helped us in putting this program together. Please do feel free to give us your feedback so we can continually improve such training opportunities. Today's presentation is by Dr. Major Vimal Raj, who is the Head of Radiology and a Consultant Cardiothoracic Radiologist in Narayana Institute of Cardiac Sciences, Bangalore. He is an expert in adult and congenital cardiac CT and MR imaging and also has special interest in interstitial lung disease and pulmonary hypertension imaging. He has published more than 75 articles in peer-reviewed journals and has textbooks on FRCR and HRCT under his belt. He also holds a patent in post-mortem CT coronary angiography catheter design and has been awarded a medal by the NATO for his operational service in Afghanistan. He is a convener of Cardiothoracic Imaging Fellowship in NH Bangalore. Welcome to this session on case-based review of viability assessment. I hope you've gone through our previous learner series on viability assessment and how it is done in cardiac MRI. The objective of this session is to look at some cases of viability. Prior to looking at this, just a quick summary how we use cardiac MRI to assess viability. We look at the wall thickness in end diastole. We look at the wall motion of the segments. We also look at the delayed enhancement imaging. And in doubtful cases, we would use low dose dobutamine stress to assess for viability. In delayed enhancement imaging, it is critical to know that any segment which is more than 75% of transmurality is non viable, whereas anything which is less than 50% of murality is viable. Segments which have 51 to 75% of infarction may be viable or non viable, and it is important to look at the wall motion abnormality of these segments. The segments which have a kinetic movement are non-viable with this degree of infarction while segments which are mildly hypokinetic with this degree of delayed enhancement are considered viable. In summary, viability assessment is a combination of wall motion abnormality, late gadolinium enhancement imaging and looking for the wall thickening and thickness at end diastole. It is important to mention the status of each segment at each level so that adequate information is available for the clinician to decide on the management of the patient. A 17 segment model is utilized when we are reporting these cases. Let's look at case number one. This is a 65 year old male who had a left dominant system, left circumflex artery had 90% stenosis, and LAD had 80% stenosis. The patient underwent an MRI because there was some LV dysfunction, and the clinical question asked at the time of MRI was viability in both LCX and LAD territory. So we are looking at the two chamber and the four chamber views and what we can see is the right ventricle and the right atrium are doing well. The left ventricle is mildly dilated with some reduction in the systolic function of the ventricle. Now when we look at the short axis images at basal, mid and apical cavity level, what becomes very apparent is the hypokinesis and thinning of the inferior segment of the myocardium. The anterior, the septal and the lateral wall seem to be working well. It's just the inferior segments which are not 
working well. The segments are a kinetic with a wall thickness likely to be less than 6 mm. The corresponding delayed enhancement images demonstrate that there is near transmural enhancement in the basal inferior to infralateral segments, the mid inferior segment, and the apical inferior segment. And every other bit of the myocardium is normal in appearance without any delayed enhancement. So, in the report, we would comment that of the 17 segments, three are non viable. The basal segment, there was a bit more of infralateral involvement, although inferior was also involved. I would tend to call more towards the infralateral segment at the basal cavity level, mid inferior, and apical inferior segment. There were no secondary complications such as LV clot, microvascular obstruction, or significant valvular regurgitation. So, what is very apparent in this case that the LCX territory, because this is a left dominant system, there were three non viable segments. However, the LAD segments are viable, and if revascularization is considered, it should be done in LAD segments. Sometimes we get asked to quantify the scar burden. If you have got sophisticated softwares which will do the scar burden analysis, then those are the best ways of doing it. If not, if you want to give an approximate assessment, in this case, we can give three segments with each segment getting a percentage of 6% based on the 17 segment model. Then three segments are non viable with transmural infarcts, three into 6%, making it 18%. So the scar burden becomes approximately 18% which can be used in the absence of softwares to assess the true fibrotic burden. Let's look at another case. This is a 70-year-old male who has got a right dominant system. All the three vessels seem to have disease with up to 80% stenosis. And the question which is asked to us is to assess the viability. I'll let this movie run a little bit. Now you can see there is a two-chamber view and a four chamber view. Please make up your own minds. When we look at the right ventricle, the right ventricle is functioning well. There is very minimal mitral regurgitation. Now, on the two chamber view and in the four chamber view, what is obvious is that the apex is akinetic. It's not at all moving, it's thinned out. The apical anterior segment is also thinned and akinetic. However, the inferior segments seem to be working very well. The short axis images of this patient demonstrate good wall motion changes in the basal cavity with no areas of hypokinesis. When we start looking at the mid cavity, what is apparent is that the mid anterior and the androceptal segments are thinned and akinetic, while the inferior and the lateral wall seems to be working well. When we look at the apical cavity, the apical anterior segment is thinned out, so is the septum in the apical cavity. The corresponding delayed enhancement images show us that there is transmural infarction in the apical anterior segment, apical septum, the mid anterior, and the mid anteroseptal segments, while other segments have normal delayed enhancement appearances. In our report, we would say that of the 17 segments, five are non viable the mid anterior and androceptal segment, the apical anterior segment, and septum. And remember, the apex, which was also thinned out and akinetic, is non viable. This can be seen in a four chamber or a two chamber delayed enhancement images, which I have not demonstrated in this case. Let's look at case number three. This is a 50-year-old female who had a right dominant system 
where right coronary artery had 90% stenosis, while LAD only had 40% stenosis. CINE two chamber and four chamber images demonstrate that there is mitral regurgitation in this patient where you can see this as a jet. And when we look at the anterior segments in the two chamber view, seems to be good contractility, while the inferior segments seem to be mildly hypokinetic. The left atrium is enlarged, the right ventricle seems to be doing a good function. I tend to utilize the short axis images for assessment of my wall motion because they are in the true plane of the ventricle and are easier in assessing. One way of assessment is to just put the cursor in the middle of the ventricle and look at each segment coming towards the cursor. So we can see at basal cavity, the inferior segment seems to be hypokinetic. In the mid cavity as well, the inferior segment is hypokinetic. And as we go towards the apical cavity, the inferior segment is also hypokinetic in this patient. Looking at the delayed enhancement images, what we can see is areas of near transmural infarction in the basal inferior segment. But it's important to look at the segment adjoining this, which is the basal inferoceptal segment, where you're seeing up till 50% of subendocardial infarction. The same is true with the mid infraceptal segment that you are seeing less than 50% of subendocardial infarction while the inferior segment is showing near transmural infarction in this case. In conclusion, we would say in this report of the 17 segments, three are non-viable. The basal mid and apical inferior segments are non-viable, whereas the basal and mid infraceptum are viable and hibernating. Further management decision will be taken based on this input and patient's symptoms and response to optimal medical therapy. Case number four is of a 55-year-old male who has a right dominant system with left circumflex artery showing 90% stenosis, RCA 70% stenosis, and LAD 80% stenosis. Looking at the two chamber and four chamber views, what we can see is that there is mild global hypokinesis with reduced wall motion in the anterior as well as the inferior segments in this two chamber view. Right ventricle seems to be functioning very well. Looking at the short axis images of this patient, we can see some thinning and hypokinesis of the anterolateral segment at the basal cavity level. The lateral wall is also moving less compared to the other segments. The inferior anterior wall in the mid cavity, as well as apical cavity, where inferior and lateral wall is hypokinetic. When we look at the delayed enhancement images, what is very clear in this patient is areas of extensive subendocardial infarction, which are present in apical septum, inferior segment, lateral wall, mid cavity septum, inferior and lateral segments, in keeping with infarction, which has got less than 50% of murality. In the basal cavity, similar changes are seen apart from one focal area where there is near transmural infarction in the basal anterolateral segment, which corresponds to this area of severe hypokinesis to akinesis that we had seen earlier. So when we report this case, we would say that of the 17 segments, one is non-viable. That happens to be the basal anterolateral segment, whereas all the other segments are viable and hibernating and may benefit from revascularization. This is the last case in this series of a 70-year-old male who had a right dominant system with 
total occlusion of the LAD. So cardiac MRI was performed for assessment of viability. And what we can see is this uh, large area of thinning of the anterior wall. There is some thickening in the apical region, but there is akinesis. You can see the inferior wall is functioning very well. On short axis images, what is apparent is towards the apical cavity, the apical anterior segment is thinned out with some hypokinesis of the apical septum and mid anterior segment. These are the delayed enhancement images. What we can see are these areas of infarction in the mid anterior segment, the apical septum, some of the apical lateral wall and inferior segments also have an infarct while the apical anterior segment is severely thinned out with no normal myocardium. What is interesting to see in this patient is this black area which is towards the apical cavity next to an infarct which corresponds to a LV cavity thrombus. Further images of the same patient on delayed enhancement you can see here in the forechamber the LV apical thrombus that we can see. Also when we do early gadolinium enhancement images in some specific patients you can see this area of myocardium which is not enhancing and there is a thrombus in the LV apex. So in conclusion we would have said of the 17 segments four are non-viable the mid and apical anterior segment the apical septum and the apex and there is a lv thrombus in this patient so to conclude cardiac mri viability assessment is based on wall thickness wall motion and delayed enhancement any segment which has got more than 75 percent of murality of infarction is non viable any segment which has more than 75% murality of infarction is non viable any segment which has less than 50% of infarction is viable and segments which are 50 to 75% of infarction we need to look at the wall motion abnormality to decide on their viability status it is also important to look for secondary complications such as LV thrombus and microvascular obstruction. Thank you very much for patient listening. Please feel free to reach out to us with any comments or questions. Thank you.